Hello and welcome to the first episode of Gear 6. So, I've got Andrew joining me today, the car I'm standing in front of, which is a 2010 Renault Clio Tourer, or Estate, and the lighting here is shite. <laughs> so it's a 1.1 litre petrol engine, obviously that means there's no air flow, there's nothing like that. It's a machine, so to speak. And that's literally it, what it is as well. It can un outrun any car you put me in front of. You didn't hear that from me though. It's a bit of a beast, that car. It still reaches zero to 60 faster than my 14. You've seen it, does. And that's got a 1.5 diesel, but oh well. So this colour is called Extreme Blue. blue. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. Blue. My Scenic is called Azuro Blue. It is type of pistol. But whatever. Uh, as you'll notice on this car, there's a few features that you don't see anymore. So, oh, there is that. You get that in some cars. But there's this, like, almost tape. That's plastic. Okay, but you go down here, you see a bit of discoloration. It's almost like tape. You can feel it. It's a layer. It's hard cut plastic <clears throat> that's yeah. also inside the car as well. Yeah, that's true. And I believe it's to maintain the sort of sleek look. Because you get the blacks around the door seals. And they're going to continue that black stripe to make it look like a continuous panel. Because it's straight along as well. <clears throat> and it does it all over. If I stand out of your way, uh, about that far, you see he's got new tyres, you can't see that, but he's got new tyres all round. Mm -hmm. Andrew's got them in place because he just loves that car so much. Yeah, they're all bald by the time I was finished with them. Yeah, and if you remember back in the Shroom Vlogs days when I was first driving that car, they were new and I had them as well. <laughs> Small Renault badge compared to the one that you get on new vehicles. Yeah. My dad just got a Renault Arcana, a brand new one, same size badge as the Scenic. Mm -hmm. So it does have. A silver sort of front bumper that I've never understood the one for, but it's there. Then it's got black, then black in the grill, then back to blue again. It's fair enough, it's a look for its day. It looks good. Coming up again, of course, you've got the big black bit there, white on the side, and then you've got a big sort of black bezel around the outside and the top as well. The headlights balls were just replaced as well, which means they're really bright. And if, if you want to show that, yeah, thank you. All right. Here we go. There's some headlights for you. They are a lot brighter than they used to be, and the full beams are even better, I think. There you go. There's some high beams and there's some lows. But that's fine, because they will do that, it'll turn themselves off. So that's been replaced as well. Yeah. There's a fucking tiny bit of silver down here for no apparent reason. But hey. that's the silver in the bumper at the front. There's the door handles as well, which are also silver. Okay. I don't know if, as an upgrade, you could get them in blue as well, but I've never looked. You got the black roof racks, which I really like, and the suspension, which is still strong for its age. Mm -hmm. Of course, you go like that. The doors open. Very uh, widely. Yeah. Thanks for your input. And I can still outrun your car. And unlike most new cars, the doors sound like they shut. Look. You can hear it goes boom on the new cars. Even my new car that I'm going to get, it just goes. Bump. So, here is the relatively big boot. Now, it is big for the size of car. If you had the normal Clio, it'd be a fraction of the size. But it even comes with one of these. A retractable boot liner that I can't use anymore. I did have it in the Clio and I had it working every day. But it seems when you don't use it every day, there you go, it fucks up on you. So, it has a false floor and underneath, well, I left the dog cage and several things in for Andrew because I don't need them. No dogs in my car. <laughs> so yeah, big boot. If you, Stuart, if you'd like to demonstrate what it, how big the boot can actually get is surprisingly massive. If, if I have to say so myself. You've got another two, three feet of space there. Yeah, and because. It's not as bad as mine, they fold, but it's almost like an, a slightly up sleeping position. Exactly. My car, the seats fold down, but then you have like a that much drop. Mm -hmm. And if you remove them, you're laying on metal. And it's kind of spiky. It just slides into place. And, and it should only take one person. And it just clips in. Yeah. And then when you're done, seats go back up, door shuts, stays a good one. <laughs> So, this car being my first car, I still have a lot of feelings about it. It was the first car I properly drove with, uh, sort of under my name and insurance, etc. So, I mean, it does mean a lot to me. 
It's still got the five gears and the reverse gear that doesn't really like to go in a lot of the time. It's still got a manual handbrake, but I won't do that because it's hell. It should still have yeah, a locking steering wheel, which for its age is still pretty good. It has an immobiliser because it's made after 1990. And the engine... That still sounds good. There's a the dash cam. The engine... Annoyingly starts up better than my scenic in the cold weather. Maybe it's something to do with the fact this is petrol. Mine's just diesel. But somehow his is still better than the start. It's great. It sounds great. And of course, everyone on it works just as it should. And there's, the seats here still move the way they're supposed to. The headrests adjust. There's a mirror on the passenger side and the driver's side. Interior lights in the front, but not the back. Fair enough. It's a Tudor, so... I don't know what you're going to take as. It still has movement to go up and down. It doesn't come in and out though, because you know, small car anyway. And of course it's got the time lit up there, which you can adjust with a little dial down here. But you can't see that. Everything's nice. And that right there, you can see it, is an aftermarket microphone. And that there is an aftermarket radio. I didn't put that in, but I'm glad that the previous owner did. Because beforehand it had no Bluetooth connection, it had a CD player and radio, that was about it. But now with this one, it's some sort of SPB10 or something, uh, Pioneer radio. With that, you get Bluetooth. And of course, as most Renaults do, old ones, you get a standard key and you get a flip one as well. The flip one's broken and this one's just about falling apart, but 11 years, that's not terrible. And the last thing I want to show you is the engine bay, because that's one thing I've fucking forgotten. So it's engine bay time. So finally, here is the engine bay, as you'd expect. A few normal things. The battery cover with a relatively small battery. And there's tracker boxes in there too. <laughs> there's the air filter box. Anti-coolant? Uh, anti-coolant? What? Yeah, Anti-freeze yeah. coolant? Engine coolant, I know what I mean. <coughs> there's air intakes all over the place there. Spark plugs are obviously in there. We've got few shiny cables there actually, they'll be relatively new. And the one problem that all these seem to have is the burst cable there, which takes in air, it's a vacuum line. Which I fixed. Yeah, I had Andrew's uncle at one point fix it for me. We used black electrical tape and zip ties. And it held together okay. When Andrew got it, it was going to happen, it burst again. So then he used plasters and tape, And it's still running strong. Yeah, and it's still bloody going. Which is actually really impressive as well. I'm glad that car is what it is. Also, you'll notice the little flap there for the anti the screen wash is still open. I can only assume what Andrew's about to do is start the engine. Yep. And probably rev it to fart. <laughs> Here we go. E. Nice. Yes, and that is what it does sound like. Now, for a 2010 car, that is pretty good going. <laughs> a lot of the templates you see are usually in a scrapyard or broken, but it shows when you take care of a car how long it can last. Okay, 11 years isn't that bad, but nowadays it kind of is, because things aren't made to last like they used to be, and I think this was the final era of things that were meant to be built to last. So... Thanks for watching this video. The next one we've got is a 2014 Renault Scenic Diesel. So, like, subscribe. There goes the engine stop. <coughs> Turn the notification bell on if you haven't already. And I'll see you in another episode of Gear 6. That'll be £10, please. <laughs>